Hello, hello. I'm going to do some really, really slow drawing, I'm afraid. And this is a really long video, so I will warn you now. Because cause using a pencil takes so much longer than colouring stuff in with chalk. And I, I fancied doing... Because this is such a pale picture, I thought, well, I'll actually... I, I, I fancy doing it with a watercolour paint. So that's what I did. And uh, it's a keelback. <laughs> it looks like a Type 6. With that enormous, great big cockpit that you can see all the way around and in and out of and those big shoulders that you get with a type 6 but it's more powerful it's better than a type 6 it doesn't hold quite as much cargo but it's got a fighter bay so it is much much better at protecting itself and in addition to the fighter bay you've actually got two more hard points you've got two class 2 hard points on there as well so it actually it's like a, a cargo ship but it's equipped to look after itself so <laughs> really looking at it the ideal role for it is mining it's it's an excellent miner for the size of ship and the cheapness of ship i mean it's, it's not a lot over three million credits which which means that even if you do accidentally blow it up you're only losing 150 grand and it can do core mining you've got enough internals to to do some rock blowing up which is hugely lucrative so it's not bad is it and of course when you know when they come looking for all the tasty cargo, you can just let the fighter out and, and then you can escape, abandoning your fighter to be destroyed. But um, there's some payback. It's heavier because it's chunkier. So it, it's, it's not got quite such a good jump range. So you can't make it into that, that wonderful explorer. I like my exploration type six. Apparently you can get it up to about 50 light years. I don't know. I've not actually checked. There's a few websites that you can look at to see what you can do to equip different ships in different ways. I've not really investigated the keelback, to be honest. People get absurdly attached to their keelbacks. They like them. It's a, it's, it's a funny little ship <laughs> with its ridiculous rotary thing. Its rotary thrusters look like a little Minecraft figure, with little Lego arms that go back and forth. And they spin round, and it, it kind of. But apparently, that that I don't I don't own a keelback, so I can't verify any of this. But a, but apparently, the little the little rotary flappy wings, as it were, <laughs> they make it rotate really well, and the yaw and the improves its rotation tons. It's not super super manoeuvrable, but it doesn't matter if you fail the uh, the interdiction because you've at least got a little bit of firepower behind you. So you're not necessarily going to have your um, your 40 tons of Benitoite stripped away from you by um, by you know Brian Anger in his Diamondback Scouts coming to threaten you, and uh, and that's quite comforting really. Um, Lacon ships are all quite they've got the full range Lacon have. They're 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 they've got so many different types of ships really. Of all the type ships, it's uh, it sort of stands slightly to one side with that fighter bay and the fact you can multi crew as well with it. And it's quite it, it's it's a funky little thing. I I think it's quite clever. I really enjoyed painting this. It was it was steady. It was it was calming, and uh, it, I, I should have done it more orange than I did. But to be fair, the the light in the room when I was painting it doesn't really show off the orange that there actually is in it. When you look at the picture, it is actually a little bit more orange than than you can see on the video. But uh, I just enjoyed using the paintbrush for change. I um, uh, it's not something I'm terribly good at. Some people are just just do beautiful watercolors, and and it is it's one of the the more difficult types of painting to do. Acrylic paint's dead easy, and oil paint you can you can fix most stuff with oil paint as well. Whereas a watercolor you can't go wrong really. You can absorb a bit, but for the most part you've got to think about it when you before you put the paint on the paper. Well, you've got to wet the paper and then place a little tiny bit of paint on with your paintbrush and then sort of start to uh, allow the, the water and the, the capillary action of the paper surface to do its work. And that you've kind of got to build up a bit of tacit skill to do that. And it, that takes time. And I, I am not willing to spend that many years learning to do that. Uh, I think it, it's good fun, though. It, it's very different to what I normally do. Anyway, uh, well, thank you for listening to me going on at such length for so long about so very little. Um, yeah, I will probably do another one soon. Thanks. Bye.